So today I'm going to be ranking all 27 episodes from season 4 of Wizards of Waverly Place. Now, not a lot of Disney shows were lucky enough to get a fourth season. Wizards was the fourth show after That's So Raven, Kim Possible, and Hannah Montana to get a fourth season. And I think that was kind of a sign because season 4 of Wizards is the best fourth season of any Disney show and probably the best season of this entire show. I don't know, for me the best season of Wizards flip-flops between season 2 and season 4. Also, I think season 4 is the most cohesive season of the show because it's not just a bunch of random episodes that have nothing to do with each other. You actually have to watch this entire season in order. Anyways, without further ado, let's rank all 27 episodes from season 4 of Wizards of Waverly Place. Do you see Mason anywhere? Every day this week he's accidentally run into me as I was getting on the elevator to talk about us getting back together again. Maybe he's hiding from these fresh, delicious T-bone steaks. <laughs> no, he's not here. So, I hated this episode. First of all, Mr. Larry Tate turns into a zombie, which was disgusting to see. Then Alex and Mason get back together, and you already know I didn't like that relationship at all. Also, this was the third part of the Wizards of Apartment 13B saga, and it's easily my least favorite part. Harper and I don't need to work together. I'm gonna do my own show and move out by myself. But you don't know how to make marionettes. Oh, yes, I do. Turn this clever spellcaster into Alex, the puppet master. Sounds like a spell. In this episode, Alex and Harper are trying to earn enough money to move out, so they start planning a puppet show. This episode really shined a light on how Harper feels about her relationship with Alex, but overall, I just found this episode to be pretty forgettable. Hey, Dad. Now that I'm probably going to be the family wizard, I think it's time I get that family wizard robe everyone's always talking about. Is, uh, is this it? In this episode, Justin struggles to pass the family robe to Max. Meanwhile, Harper tries to get Alex to take accountability for her actions and show her what life without magic is like. Although this episode was sweet, it too was pretty forgettable. Well, he just tore a phone book in half. I am not fighting him. I, I, I could get hurt. Dad, Dad, if you don't fight him, you can't win. How am I going to make up for what I did to him? But... In this episode, Zeke wrestles with a retired professional wrestler who's making a comeback. So, I love the episodes about Zeke. He's always so outlandish and entertaining, and he's one of my favorite characters of this show. But I just don't think this was his best episode. Not even close. How you doing, sweater vest? Uh, <laughs> the name is Penny Nichols from WizTech. I'm here to inform you that you're all required to perform a wand drill. Ooh, a wand drill. This sounds like fun. In the first part of the Wizards vs. Angels saga, we get introduced to Rosie, who ends up being an angel. This episode was okay in my opinion, not really one of my favorites, but I did hear someone once say that the secret of Rosie being an angel was spoiled by the trailers for this episode. Keep the clapping going because I have a very big announcement. I have decided to quit the wizard competition. Ladies and gentlemen, the Russo family quitter, we are an impressive bunch! In this episode, Alex gives up on the wizard competition so she can focus all of her time on her relationship with Mason. Unfortunately, since she gives up the competition, she'll just be a regular human, and regular humans can't be with werewolves in their universe. Overall, I thought this episode was cute. I especially love the rich Kakui family, and the father of the family is actually Maria Canals Barrera, Teresa Russo's actress's real-life husband. So I thought that was cool. Hey, it's the happy couple who, instead of breaking up, became just friends. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Great. And Harper's helping, too. She sat between us at the movies today, so we weren't tempted to hold hands. Thank you, friend Wall. In this episode, Alex and Mason are trying to figure out how to be just friends, and just then, Dean, who was Alex's boyfriend in season 2, returns. Alex and Dean start having a good time, then Mason gets jealous, and he eats Dean. Like he werewolves up and straight up devours him. So yeah, this episode was ruined by Mason being Mason. Don't freak out, but when I did that magic trick with Max's money, everything is not what it seemed. What do you mean? Do you believe in the existence of wizards? Wizards? Because after what I saw today, I know they exist. What? <laughs> no, that's crazy. Alex is not a wizard. In this episode, Zeke finds out that the Russos are wizards, and I automatically feel inclined to compare this episode to the season 2 episode, Harper Knows, where Harper finds out the secret. 
Even though I think Zeke Finds Out had higher stakes, Harper Knows was just more entertaining in my opinion. As you can see, this apartment has many wonderful amenities, like this beautiful view. Huh. Of another building's rusty old fire escape. Pretend you didn't see that. You can choose your own view. A beach. This is the first episode of the four-part Wizards of Apartment 13B saga, where we see Alex and Harper move out to an apartment complex with a secret 13th floor reserved for magical creatures. I thought it was interesting to see two girls move out the house and rent their own apartment because that's something that doesn't really happen on Disney because usually the characters just go off to college but I really liked how we got to see Alex and Harper take a different path. But the reason this episode is lower on this list is because the girls throw a housewarming party and Mason ruins it by being Mason. Okay everybody we're leaving. Where to? 1957. I've heard of that place. No Alex what are you doing? In this episode, the Russos get evicted, so they travel back in time to prevent Jerry's father from giving up ownership of the building in the first place. I thought this episode was alright. I love the 1950s and 1970s references, and I love the ongoing joke about them leaving Harper behind in the past. Also, I wonder why did it take until the 104th episode of the show for them to do a time travel episode? Well, better late than never, I guess. Why be alone when you can whip up a Harper clone? <laughs> Sure, Alex. Can you sit in on drums? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, and I'll make popcorn to throw at the TV when we lose. Oh, we're not gonna lose. We're gonna own it. In this episode, Alex has been missing spending time with Harper, so she whips out a Harper clone that can be with her 24-7. I actually thought it was hilarious when the real Harper was yelling at her clone. It kind of felt like the new confident Harper from the later seasons was intimidating her old awkward self from the earlier seasons. But overall, I really liked this episode, and I thought it was an interesting concept. Max, you tell us where they went, or I'll send you to your room. Sweet! I love my room. Then you can never go there again. I never liked my room anyway. Jerry, how are we supposed to punish this thing? In the second episode of the Wizards vs. Angels saga, Alex, Justin, and Harper sneak off to an angel club with Justin's angel girlfriend, Rosie. I thought this episode was pretty cool. I especially love the joke when the Russos got caught in their lie and have to prove that they're angels, so they give Alex a harp and tell her to play the harp since every angel can play the harp. Then Alex immediately gives the harp to Harper and says, well here, you're Harper. Also, this episode was nominated for an Emmy Award, which is amazing. Forever, you broke up with me over text message. Yeah, you want me back, I know you do. You Alex. said my sister wouldn't know what Alex! <laughs> what? In this episode, there's a heat wave, so the Russo family closes up shop and travels to the beach for the day. Usually, I don't like episodes about heat waves, but I'm glad they didn't focus the entire episode on that aspect. I love the concept about how fortune tellers bring real fortune to wizards, and it was so messed up when Alex's fortune read, Say Goodbye to Your Life, and she came very close to death so many times throughout the episode, but then she transferred her fortune to a little human girl who ended up getting a whole bunch of money. But overall, this is a fun summer episode. I'm really glad that we're still friends, but I just think it's time for you to move on. Move on? Very well. I heard this apartment had fleas anyway. <laughs> Boy, really wants you back. No, I know. This is the ugly side of being irresistible. In the second episode of the Wizards of Apartment 13B saga, Alex and Harper look for a roommate, then they come across the perfect roommate who just so happens to be a ghost. Unfortunately, this new ghost roommate spends the night making a bunch of noise as she haunts the entire apartment complex, and they find out it's because she's grieving because she misses the love of her life, who is a guy named Donnie. Then Alex tracks him down and finds out that he's stranded on the Bermuda Triangle. Alex then takes the new ghost roommate there and gets trapped. But I loved how Mason came to rescue Alex. That was one of the very few moments where I liked his character. And I even loved his little banter with Alex when they were having an ugly contest. Also, this is the only episode of the show that aired on my birthday, and I remember watching it live. Max, it's Justin and Alex. Look, you weren't going to change the competition back, so we had to do something. Oh, so you turned yourself into me and went behind my back? Actually, went behind all three of my backs. <laughs> Justin, get him out of here. You guys are ruining my plan. It was a dumb plan anyway. Oh, you had the same plan. 
In this episode, Max joins a group of young, sophisticated wizards and the guy who plays Spencer on Good Luck Charlie, Shane Harper. His character convinces Max to move up the original wizard competition to the following Monday. I thought it was cool how this episode mentioned the wizard competition date, and the actual series finale with the wizard competition would end up airing exactly one year after this episode, give or take a day. This is also the episode where Justin and Alex accidentally turned Max into Maxine, which was very interesting. So how about those tickets? <laughs> so, sorry, uh, I, just, I just forgot why I was here for a minute. What was your name? Alex Russo. I'm Justin. I'm Max. <laughs> Uh, you still haven't given us those tickets yet. In this episode, Alex's relationship with Mason is on the rocks, and just then, the dashing beast tamer Chase Riprock walks into Alex's life and threatens the relationship between Alex and Mason. This episode did a good job at introducing a new character, and I loved how Justin kept trying to act like he was on the same level as Chase, even though he clearly was not. Hello, son. Ah, and you must be Alex. Hmm. Ah. So nice to, oh. to meet you. She smells clean. Thank you. It's not a compliment. <laughs> Clearly, she's a bather. In this episode, we meet Mason's parents, and usually I don't like the Mason-centric episodes of this show because I don't like Mason. But it was nice exploring what a real werewolf family acts like and what their traditions are in this universe. Also, this episode was written by David Henry, which I thought was awesome. I probably can't do a lot of things anymore. <laughs> right, Daddy? Oh. <laughs> She's doing to you exactly what you used to do to me. Hmm. Looks like the little girl shoe is on the other foot, and it fits well. <laughs> This is one of my most watched episodes of the show, and the reason I watch it so often is because it's nice to see Max's character, who's now in Maxine's body, get all of the attention for once, and little Maxine was just bringing the heat. She was so mad, and I would have been too if my brother and sister turned me into a little girl for an indefinite amount of time. So, what do you think? Cocktail dress? No, this is my favorite part of the story. <laughs> Make me a princess. All right, but you're gonna stick out. I'm Harper. I'm wearing a book dress. This episode was so creative. First of all, I loved how Harper was Cinderella and Alex was just the fairy godmother. Because Harper was beautiful and most people don't really pay attention to her because they just see Alex. I also loved how they mashed up this fairy tale with other fairy tales like the Three Little Pigs. And they even had Mason be the big bad wolf because, duh. Who is that adorable little girl? <laughs> it's not Max because Max is a boy! <laughs> Professor Crumbs, your shoe is untied. Ooh. Where'd he go? He'll know how to turn me back. In this episode, Maxine turns back to Max. Honestly, for such a creative show, they had some not-so-creative episode titles. Anyways, I really enjoyed this episode, and I thought it was interesting how Justin and Alex cross spells again and turn Professor Crumbs into a young version of himself. In this episode, Justin manages to successfully pass all of his wizard delinquents, making him once again eligible to compete in his family's wizard competition. I really liked this episode. I liked how Felix ended up being the only one who could pull the wand out of that magical ball. And I thought the evil wizard guy who tried to sabotage Justin was more funny than evil. Also, this was the 100th episode that they filmed, which is a major accomplishment. The whiz emergency whiz light is on! This means the powers are still down. Oh no! The government must have captured everyone! This is bad. That means they still have Professor Crumbs too. In the season premiere, Alex tells the public about wizardry in an attempt to free all of the wizards trapped by the government. Unfortunately, everything was a setup to see whether or not the Russo siblings would expose wizardry. I think this was a great season opener because it picked up right where season 3 left off, and I felt like it was strange yet interesting seeing Alex and Justin going back to level 1 because they both attempted to expose wizardry, and Max is now in the lead and he will continue to be for like the first half of season 4. For saving humanity from the angels of darkness, you have been named Wizard of the Year! Congratulations, Alex! <laughs> Wow, a truly underwhelming display of enthusiasm. 
In this episode, we find out that Alex has won the esteemed Wizard of the Year award, much to everyone's surprise. And during the ceremony, chaos ensues as Mason spots Alex hanging out with Chase, then the two boys break into a fight. Along with being one of the most memorable episodes of this show, I love the Wizard of the Year concept which Casey Undercover kinda copied with their Spy of the Year episode five years later. And good on Alex Russo for dumping Mason by the end of this episode. Oh my gosh, that's Rosie. Wait, wait, how do you know her? She was my teacher when she was a guardian angel. What do you mean, was? Rosie's an angel of darkness now. What? That's why Justin's acting bad. In the first one hour special of this season, the Russos find out that Justin's girlfriend, Rosie, is actually an angel of darkness. She turns Justin evil, then Alex must fight to save him and the world from the angels of darkness. Now usually when a show has two or more hour long specials in a season, you can always tell which one is the weak link. In my opinion, it's this one. Listen, Wizards vs. Angels was very good, but it just doesn't make my top three. Although I love this special for giving us the Alex quotes, oh, I don't run, and what? My wand! This means NASA was right. It's the end of the world. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be okay, honey. In what is possibly, no, definitely the most somber episode of the entire show, there's an asteroid hurtling towards the Earth and everyone is certain that it's the end of the world. And they weren't playing around, everyone was fearing for their lives in this episode. And although I think this is top 10 best episodes of the entire show, I'm still a little confused as to how it aired on Disney cause this was a very dark episode, especially when everybody thought that the Russo kids passed away while taking on the asteroid. This is Professor Crumbs. Oh, Professor Crumbs, now is not a really good time for me, but I can call you tomorrow. Give me that! <laughs> Professor Crumbs, we are doomed! We are falling into a black hole and we need help! In the final part of the Wizards of Apartment 13B saga, we find out that Gorog, the leader of the Dark Angels, created the secret 13th floor as part of an elaborate plan to get revenge on the Russo kids for defeating him in Wizards vs. Angels. This was an episode I remember watching live. I remember Alex and Justin being trapped in the apartment with the black hole and Max coming to save them. I remember Alex, Justin, and Max combining their powers to defeat Gorog once and for all. And I remember Juliet making a surprise return. Now, if you were one of those people who stopped watching Disney as soon as Hannah Montana went off the air, then you definitely missed out on gems like this episode right here. Let's find out which Russo will be the last wizard standing. Come on, you had to know this episode was going to be number one. In this episode, we finally get the wizard competition, and I've always considered this to be the best episode of the show and the best Disney or Nickelodeon series finale ever. It's also the most watched episode of the show and the most watched Disney series finale ever, and I see why. This episode was an event. I remember watching it live and having the time of my life. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Happy, sad, confused, anxious. It was the best. Also, I kind of wish they had the viewers at home vote to see who they would like to be the family wizard, but I guess they wanted to keep it a surprise, and I respect that. Anyways, that's my ranking for all 27 episodes of the fourth season of Wizards of Waverly Place. It took a lot of time and effort, so please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below, and thank you so much for watching.